Okay, so we believe as an industry that in the next one year, the vast majority of programmers will be replaced by AI programmers. There's lots of reasons to think this is going to happen. This is the consensus. In programming, it's pretty simple. You just keep writing code until you pass the programming test. So strangely, the first question I always ask programmers is, Everybody understands the ChatGPT moment. Everyone here has used ChatGPT, now 4.0, with a new one coming. Gemini, there's a new one called 2.5, which is beating the other ones. I'm pleased for that as a big, big uh, Google person. Um, Claude 3 um, is the best one for programming, and they're all in the same equivalence class. Th the power of these models is extraordinary. Um, that's last year's story that everybody thinks is the current story. The next story is the ability to do planning. Take a look at uh, OpenAI R3, uh, or, excuse me, O3 or DeepSeek R3, and you'll see that uh, they do this incredible demo. You ask it to show it what it's doing or do deep research, which is available in most of these things, and it'll show you how it goes up the decision path. It'll try something, it didn't work. It goes back, it tries something else, didn't work. Oh, it goes here, oh, it worked, and then it goes over here, and so forth. It's following the tree of choices. But that's how we think. But the big breakthrough now, through a technology called reinforcement learning, is this. So you go, okay, well, that's pretty impressive. Okay, so we believe, as an industry, that in the next one year, the vast majority of programmers will be replaced by AI programmers. We also believe that within one year, you will have graduate level mathematicians that are at the tippy top of graduate math programs. There's lots of reasons to think this is gonna happen. This is the consensus. You go, okay, well that's pretty interesting. Now, I can't do that kind of math. Very few people can do that math. How can the computer do that math better than anybody else? To some degree, it's because math has a simpler language than human language. So the way these algorithms actually work is they're doing essentially word prediction. So you take, you take a, pe a sentence, you take a word out, and then it learns how to put the correct word back in. This is called the loss function. And it's optimized to do that at a scale that's in, in, unimaginable to us as humans. So you do the same thing for math. But there you use a conjecture and then a proof format through a protocol called lean. In programming, it's pretty simple. You just keep writing code until you pass the programming test. So strangely, the first question I always ask programmers is what language do you program in? And the correct answer is it doesn't matter because you're trying to design for an outcome. You don't care what code is generated by the computer. This is a whole new world, okay? So that's one year, okay? What happens in two years? Well, I've just told you about reasoning and I've told you about programming and I've told you about math. Programming plus math are the basis of sort of our whole digital world. So the evidence and the claims from the research groups in OpenAI and, and Anthropic and so forth is that they're now somewhere around 10 or 20% of the code that they're developing in their research programs is being generated by the computer. That's called recursive self-improvement is the technical term. So what happens when this thing starts to scale? Well, a lot. One way to say this is that within three to five years, we'll have what is called general intelligence, AGI, which can be defined as a system that is as smart as the smartest mathematician, physicist, you know, artist, writer, thinker, politician, maybe not in the same level, um, but you get the idea. Uh, just the creative industries and so forth, but imagine that in one computer. Okay, well, that's pretty interesting. I call this, by the way, the San Francisco consensus because everyone who believes this is in San Francisco. It may be the water. What happens when every single one of us has the equivalent of the smartest human on every problem in our pocket? So it means you have the best architect when you have an architecture problem. Another thing that's going on is the development of agentic solutions. And agents are referred to systems that have input and output in memory, and they learn. An example here is that I want to uh, buy another house. Uh, I happen to like Virginia. I grew up in Virginia. I say, find me a house in the greater McLean area. Look at the, that's one agent. Look at all the rules, figure out how big a house I can build. That's another agent. Do the transaction to buy the land. That's another agent. Design the house with a human architect. 
right? But sort of ignore them for most of the thing, but they have to sign it off. And then I approve it and then find the contractor, right? Hire the contractor, pay the bills, and at the end, sue the contractor for lack of performance. <laughs> okay? Now, I just gave you the stupidest possible explanation. I just described every business process, every government process, and every, and every sort of academic process in our nation. So it isn't just the programmers that are gonna be out of work. We're all gonna be out of work. No, that's not a consequence, I'll come to that. But, but the reason I wanna, I wanna make the point here is that in the next year or two, this foundation is being locked in and it's not, we're not gonna stop it. It gets much more interesting after that. Because remember, the computers are now doing self-improvement. They're learning how to plan, and they don't have to listen to us anymore. We call that superintelligence, or ASI, artificial superintelligence. And this is the theory that there will be computers that are smarter than the sum of humans. The San Francisco consensus is this occurs within six years, just based on scaling. Now, in order to pull this off, you have to have an enormous amount of power. I was here yesterday testifying about this, you know, and we need like, I can talk at some length about how many gigawatts and how many nuclear power plants and all the kind of stuff we can talk about separately. This path is not understood in our society. There's no language for what happens with the arrival of this. I wrote a book on this with Henry Kissinger called Genesis, which you know, I recommend obviously. But the important point is, this is happening faster than our human, that our society, our democracy, our laws will address. And there's lots of implications. That's why it's underhyped. People do not understand what happens when you have intelligence at this level, which is largely free. That's the point. How do we get ready for it? Well, we start by talking about it. And by the way, on the jobs thing, everyone assumes that automation will, repl will eliminate jobs. If you look at the history of automation ever since the uh, the looms and, uh, in uh, 300 years ago, the jobs are changed, but more jobs are created than destroyed. In this case, you'd have to convince me that this time is different. If you look in Asia, where they, for whatever reason, are choosing not to have children, the Asian reproduction rate is in the order of 1.0 or lower. So they're rapidly disappearing. So the Asian countries are very, very quickly automating the tools that I'm describing will allow the few humans that will be working very hard in 30 or 40 years if these trends continue. The rest of us will be dependent on those hardworking humans. It'll make their productivity more, much greater.